Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Candace Prince. I'm with Green Hope Project. Um, we are happy that you want to know more about our organization. Uh, we've been up to a lot of a lot of crazy stuff, so we want to share that with you. Um, and so I do have a presentation that I would like to show you. So let me go ahead and screen share and dive into this. Let's minimize a couple things. All right. Okay. So um, just so you know, um, our organization focuses on art, education, and environmentalism. Um, those are the pillars that we strongly believe in. So everything that we do is always geared back to environmentalism. Um, the seed of an idea, it can lead to change definitely. And so this all started with a group of high school students in El Dorado High School. Um, and they were talking about how they were really disappointed with all the pollution in the desert. And so they came up with the idea, hey, why don't we build a giant trash monster and you know put stats about how much trash this was created with and and you know it just kind of steamrolled into um, this incredible idea of um, you know how can we do policy change how can we um, help the community how can we do artwork and so um, I, I know this to be true because um, the seed of an idea has grown into a full-blown nonprofit where it did just start off as a club an art club after school at El Dorado High School and it quickly led to the kids even going to the state capitol, meeting with the congresswoman, um, getting awards from TCEQ, uh, meeting local representatives. And so um, I, I really believe it doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are that you can make a difference in the world. And so um, that's something that we believe in is that rather than um, talking and wishing and hoping, we believe that action is, um, is the key. You know, you may fail, so what? You're going to learn from it. Um, and so there's been plenty of mistakes we've made along the way, but we have definitely learned from that. And so um, it started with high school kids. That's how Green Hope Project began. Um, and so here's a video that kind of gets a little bit more in depth. I feel like it's really important for the younger generation to try to find a way to express themselves as well as promote environmentalism through their artwork. We went out, drove down Montana, and on the surface it looks great, it looks it looks okay. Lots of desert, and then you know you park and you walk just a couple feet in, and then you see all this trash, and you just see the pollution that's happening just down the street. With the help of the kids, my idea was to um, take the trash, wash it, sort it, inventory it, and then have a portable where local artists have clean, readily available art supplies. So there should be no excuse for money because it was free, and then we're cleaning up the land at the same time. Why do we want to stop there? Why don't we start doing local workshops where we teach people how to use it and turn it into something if they don't know how, we'll show them how. And so there's a range of things we do from taking aluminum cans and turning them to jewelry, taking magazines, rolling them into beads. And so we said, well, here's the cleanup, here's the workshops, why don't we add a third component where we have people submit artwork that's made out of recycled materials. It's just this whole like collecting, educating, and then the culmination of it, which is the big party with the art exhibition, which is Metamorphosis Trash to Treasure. Now you have students who are interested in pursuing a degree in conservation studies, in environmental studies, you know, to pursue a career and make a difference statewide, nationwide, worldwide. You know, we, we saw a need in the community, which was the pollution, right? Um, we felt like we had a skill set that could help with that which was the education and the art. And so, um, like, like it was stated in the video, we have the three components, the cleanups, um, where we collect the trash um, off the, the highway. And then um, we've got the um, workshops. So we teach people how to use those materials um, that they do pick up. And then the third component was like, yay, you use them. But what do you do with them? You just throw them in your garage or a closet and nobody's ever going to see them. The message is never going to spread. And we thought that's unacceptable. Why don't we host an art competition, Trash to Treasure? And so now we're um, on year five of that. And so we encourage you, this is going to be an annual thing. It does come around every year. So if you do have any recycled stuff that you would like to turn into artwork, enter it into our contest because you could win, you know, hundreds of dollars. We give out over $1,500 every year. Uh, the submission, um, submission stages, it's usually February, March, uh, and then the event is in April because that's the Earth Day month. Um, that's when we have that. So it'll be coming up again. So you got some time to create stuff. Got some cool uh, planters, you know, maybe get them ready. Um, 
And so, like I said, Green Hope Project, um, the nonprofit was born. And so it started with a group of high school kids with an organization called It's Your World Project. That was our club. But then the kids started to graduate and they still wanted to help. And so we were like, you know what? There's a community need here. The kids still want to help. Um, parents want to help. Business owners want to help. Um, and so we decided this needs to go to another level, which is Green Hope Project. And we became a full-blown nonprofit. Um, our board members are educators and artists. And so I'm the president, Candice Prince. Uh, Zulema Macias is our, our fearless vice president. And then um, we also could not do this without Darlene Aguirre, who is our secretary. So you're looking at three people who have day jobs. And, um, and we do this because it's our passion, it's our love, and we wanna make a difference in our community and uh, in turn the world. Um, and so um, because we kind of have that education and the art background, we think outside the box. We're a little, we're a little weird, um, but we, we like that. We'd like weird, we like unique, we like different. And so I think with that art background, um, what you're gonna see is that we see trash differently. And so what is one man's, and I'll go back because I wanna slow down. I know this is on a timer, but I think it's important that you see these. And so, Zulema, beautiful poster. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we're making jewelry out of, you know, um, cans and we're making planters out of bottles and you know we're making uh burlap rice bags we're turning them into you know pencil bags and things like that um and like i said we do have metamorphosis trash to treasure and so that's the recycled art contest we've got fifteen hundred dollars in prizes there's no entry fee all ages uh we're on year five now so we do encourage you to enter um, there's always some super cool stuff. Um, we do showcase at museums. Um, we do support local nonprofits because a portion of the proceeds from sales do go to some of the local nonprofits when we were selling the artwork. Um, we think the information boards throughout the exhibit are very important because we don't want you to just walk in and be like, oh, cool trash, you know? No, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of facts about how long it takes for these things to break down in the environment. Um, and then, you know, COVID didn't stop us. We went virtual, um, you know, and we're still going virtual and we'll continue to do that until it's safe to be back in person. But we do want to do a big old party next year and have it be a kickoff. Um, our first exhibit was in 2016. Um, we opened it up to Texas, New Mexico, and Mexico. We had over 600 entries. We had to narrow it down. It was a bit much. We had 200 pieces chosen and we have over a thousand people attend on the opening reception, including Chelsea Clinton. So that was interesting. We, we won a competition that wasn't just random, you know. <laughs> um, and so thinking outside the box, here's just some beautiful stuff. Um, another thing that we're, we're doing is we are um, working to have an artist come in from Lisbon, Portugal. His name is Bardalo II. Uh, speaking of thinking outside the box, he does this trash animal series depicting animals that are being impacted by pollution. So we do really want him to come. Uh, the plan was in 2021, but we're working on that right now. And so we want him to do one of these amazing murals within our city um, and put some information about the endangered animals in our area so that it's meaningful. So um, we'd love your support to come out when we have the unveiling of this so I think it's going to be incredible he's amazing um community impact we're trying to help the land the animals and people we believe that everything is connected the ecosystem is connected you know um if you you help people to be healthy they're going to be more productive when they're more productive they can you know help the community with jobs when they help the community with jobs we're going to thrive and so it makes sense to go to the basics and help the people that are most in need and help the vulnerable animals and we do a lot of really cool events you know and so we're just trying to give back in the best way that we can and so um we're always looking for help and and volunteers and that um I, I mean, hey, you guys are here, Environmental Summit. This was just grand plans, and now it has turned into a reality. And so we have had plenty of presentations from Earthship Biotexture. Um, we want to unite the environmental groups that, you know, have different agendas, but kind of bring them together so they have all have a platform. Um, we do have scholarships we're giving out. So um, we're gonna give out a scholarship. Uh, there's an essay contest for the Earthship Academy. If you wanna learn how to build one of these houses from, from trash, I mean, they're beautiful. It sounds bad, but they're amazing. Um, sign up for our newsletter, greenhopeproject.org. We're gonna roll out the contest details very soon. And you write an essay. If you win the essay contest, we'll send you to Taos, New Mexico to learn to build one of these. 
Um, another thing in the works is precious plastic. We want to build these machines. We do have somebody who's helping us begin these and they shred plastic. You know, one of the machines shreds, shreds it up and then um, the other ones will heat it up, mold inject it, extrude it. You can turn it into a bunch of really cool products. So it's like, you know, all these things that you typically would just throw away. Sorry, I know the thing's on a timer, but I want to spend longer talking about these. Um, and so instead of these things ending up in a landfill, and unfortunately, a lot of stuff doesn't really get recycled that you think gets recycled. And so we want to stop that. And so turn them into benches, phone cases, backsplashes, bricks to build, playgrounds. Um, so this is going to be a definitely educational thing. And we're trying to figure out how heavy we're going to go with this in the community. Well, we have like a massive drop-off site where you guys can actually bring stuff and then maybe a shop where we can sell it so we can continue to fund ourselves, um, bring in class classes for tours and make it educational. But I think this is going to be super cool. Super, super cool. We're very excited about Precious Plastic. Um, check it out. Look it up online. Type it in and you'll see um, what people have made with these. And so it's completely open source specs. Anybody can build these machines. Um, but I think we'll be the first one in the region to have one. So, um, Yay, we want your plastics. Um, unexpected consequences of us doing what we do. We've discovered several illegal dump sites. I mean, this is off of Montana, guys. This is in your backyard. Um, if this doesn't anger you, I don't know um, what will. Um, and so it just, it makes me incredibly mad um, that this kind of stuff stuff is happening. It looks like some of this is contractor waste and tire company waste. And, you know, I think um, out in the county, they think, you know, nobody can see me, I can get away with stuff. <coughs> and so we want to change that. If you are interested in being a part of this change, we do have a call to action committee that we are looking for people to be on the committee uh, to come up with ideas about how we can prevent stuff like this happening. Um, we will be inviting local officials, community members, business owners. Um, so you can be the change. Don't think that you you look at this and say, I don't know what I can contribute. You can contribute your suggestions, your questions, your ideas. And so um, reach out to us if you are interested. Um, info at greenhopeproject.org. We would love to have you. Um, but this is this is not cool. Like this is just unacceptable. And so we need to do something about it. Um, also, um, all systems are connected in some way. If one is broken, it's going to affect the rest. And so um, we have found animals that have been, you know, dumped out along with the trash, just like they were nothing. Um, and, and we're not okay with that. And so we partnered with some of the local rescue groups that we reach out to quite often for help. Um, some of the animals have ended up with me in my own home. They're running around in my backyard right now. Um, but love did help us with this sweet baby. We called her Glory. Um, a lot of them have been dumped in the des desert. Um, you know, sometimes we find remains, but I'm showing you the pictures of the happy ending. So this is her before, and this is Glory after. Went to a loving place, a great, uh, a great foster home. Um, she's doing so much better now. But um, you know, like I said, everything is connected. Like um, when you help one, you're going to help the other. And so um, this, as well, is unacceptable. It's just kind of unexpected consequences of what we do. When you get your feet on the ground, you find stuff that you didn't think was going on, and and we can either choose to sit on it or take action. And so we're going to take action. Um, if we can do it, you can do it. Um, this is practical. Trash can be in every community. I mean, it is in every community. So I don't see why this can't spread to several different places. Chapters of Green Hope Project, curriculum. We are seeking teachers um, to help us write curriculum to embed environmentalism into every classroom. I think it needs to be in every discipline. Um, this can be replicated anywhere. Um, I mean, talk about trash being readily available. I mean, guys, it's free. Why are we not capitalizing on it and using it for money? Um, like I said, that machine where we can sh shred it and we can mold inject it, heat it and turn it into cool artwork. We can make benches for our parks. We could do so much stuff. Um, but I think the key is young people. Um, you guys, we really need your help and, and, and educators. We really need you to spread this kind of word. So um, again, if you are interested in helping us write curriculum, reach out to us. We'll talk about that a little bit more. So these are some of my kiddos from El Dorado High School. They all have different fortes. Most of them did not know how to repurpose some of the stuff we had, but we taught them and that's what the class was. And we turned it into an environmental art class. So you can embed this into any class. 
Um, like I said, classes were created. These are some of my first kiddos. Um, and so we did partner with EPA and public schools to work on some stuff. Um, we've already expanded into other schools that are interested in replicating what we did at El Dorado High School. So um, we have workshops. And so I think exposing people to opportunities is how people change because you're planting seeds of ideas. Um, and so we have also worked with the juvenile probation center for our therapy projects. We help underserved populations and we can do stuff virtually if you are interested. Uh, paper making workshops, planter workshops, recycled jewelry workshops, we do it all. So if you're interested, we are more than willing to come and help your organization, your school, um, you know, anybody who's willing to listen to us, we will keep talking and showing you art stuff because we think it's fun. Um, and so we had a pitch just recently to NSHSS and their organization, education organization. Um, and so we were requesting funding for these initiatives and we actually got the grant. Yay, yay. And so if you are interested in helping us with any of these things, we would totally love to have you. Um, and so remember our pillars. We've got environmentalism, education, and art. And so we're asking for funding for each pillar. So the environmental pillar would be um, precious plastic, the machinery that we want to build. Um, and we'll definitely need more money than this, but this is just a Kickstarter to get it going. So um, FYI, we totally run on donations. So if you think that these things are important and you want them to continue, we would love even $5 that could help us. And so you just go to our website and there is a donate button at the top. And so I am so excited about the machines, I'm not gonna lie. And then education, remember I said, we're gonna mention that again, we would like to hire educators. Um, and so we would like to pay you for your time. I know it's not as much as you deserve. We know how hard you work, but is what we can afford at this point. Um, what we want you to do is help us to write lesson plans and curriculum that we can use in any discipline. Um, we find that teachers are overworked and they don't have time to um, write the lesson plans that they would like to, even if they believe strongly in environmentalism because they're too busy maybe teaching to the test or they've got you know, you know, their home life. And so we wanna make it easy. We wanna write it for you, project-based assignments. So the art component's fun at the end. Kids can get hands-on. You get a little bit of environment, environmental information with your lesson to help you make the world a better place. And everything will be completely free to teachers, open source online. So if you are interested in this, please reach out to us. We do need help. Info at greenhopeproject.org. We have been very busy with the summit, so we'll probably dive head first into this once everything kind of settles down at the end of May. And then we have requested the art, uh, art monies to help with that permanent installation for Bardalo II, which is that mural that will go up. Um, Hopefully we can collaborate with him and choose the animal um, that it will be of, but we do have some potential buildings downtown that this will be going up. Um, and so we're, we're really excited about this. Um, why support us? Um, we, we asked for monies from the Be Morathon, which was that grant, um, because, I mean, we're trying to do curriculum and we think education is long lasting. Um, it does take a little longer to get um, stuff change happening with education, but it's more permanent. I and mean, you get into people's heads and you change the culture. When you change the culture, you change habits. When you change habits, that's when things start to happen. Um, we do want to expand. We want chapters everywhere. We don't want this to end with us. Eventually we're gonna get old and gray and tired and we're gonna wanna pass this on to other people. And so that's where we want more and more people to help. Um, we do want to continue with the summit. I think that will continue to give back yearly um, through knowledge and through different organizations that are much smarter than we are about science stuff and environmental stuff. Um, and we do want to give scholarships because we think that, oh my gosh, if we can get people competing against each other to create helpful and amazing ideas that will change the world for the better, then hey, yeah, we'll throw some money at you because we need your ideas. Um, and that includes, gosh, let's get rid of plastic, by the way sucks um you know it, it's out in the environment it, you know microplastics they break down animals eat them it's so dangerous it's so toxic it's so bad we want young people to come up with something better um and you know we do create opportunities i think that's the best thing that we can do is we we create these events 
and you know, we hope people come and we hope they change and we hope we can inspire. And then we hope you take it away from there and turn it into something that we couldn't have even imagined. And so we think that's very, very long lasting education and innovation. Um, the website is up there, greenhopeproject.org. Um, so we do so much more um, than this. Um, I mean, we're, we're always hustling. Um, if you would ever like to um, volunteer to work with us, I am gonna screen share just so we could take a peek at the website. Um, if you would ever like to volunteer with us, we are always seeking volunteers. And so when you go to the website here, um, you're gonna see our donate button. So if you wanna donate, um, wonderful, great. But if you can't donate um, financially, we will always take your help. And so um, we got a little tab here that's for volunteers for sponsors, for donating. If you wanna volunteer with us, we do need help at a lot of the cleanups that we have coming up. Um, you just fill out this form, you can follow us on social media and we'll get this form and it tells us, hey, this person wants to volunteer and then we add you to our volunteer list. Um, and so um, sponsors, um, any corporations or anybody else who would like to help, of course, we will take your money and put it to good use, I promise. We do have a sponsorship packet if you like to see where the monies would go to. Um, and so we got a lot of cool stuff. Some of them have passed, some of them are coming up. Um, and so uh, we're proud to say that we've been working our booties off. Um, galleries, if you wanna go check out artwork, if you have um, you know, interest in the art world, um, we've got our Trash to Treasure Gallery from 2021, our Racial Harmony Gallery, uh, some of our Nature Walk photos. Uh, the Nature Walk thing is something that we would like to continue to do more of. Um, and that's where we take you guys out into nature. You bring your cameras, we give you a lesson on photography, and then you guys go and then what we do is we have our photo contest and so the winner gets a gift card uh, for the best photo. And so um, we would like to continue this. Um, and so I think that just speaks back to our mission, right? Of, um, of environmentalism, art and education. And so um, these amazing photos are by Benny Pohl and Liz Demultry. Um, and they were some of the people that led the tour. You click on these and you can see it bigger. Um, and so they always do amazing nature photography. And so I think this is a way just to get people outside um, because I think we're so used to being indoors, especially with the pandemic. Um, we need to be more healthy. We need to get in touch with nature because how can you fight for it if you don't experience it? We need you to fall in love with it so that you are as angry as we are when, when you see all that pollution and you say, oh my gosh, it's like hurting these animals, that's not cool. So I think the best thing is to get you out in it. Um, and so, like I said, if you wanna do more of these things and you wanna know when they happen, follow us on social media, sign up for the newsletter. Um, and of course, we just had Trash to Treasure, which finished and that was this amazing art exhibition. Um, so here's the full gallery. If you go down here, you can see everybody's stuff. And if you wanna see more details, you just click on it and it'll make it bigger. You can find out the information about the artist. I'm sure some of these are for sale if you are interested. Um, you just click on them and get a little bit more information. It makes me incredibly proud to see young people um, and artists, young and old, thinking about their concepts and the meaning behind these because there is power in art and I think art can change the world. You make people feel. If you make people feel, that's when people will take action. Um, at the top here, this, these are the winners. So if you click on them, it'll, it'll make them bigger and you can go through the winner list and see who got what and it'll say you know, this one got first place in the adult division. Um, and then there's some beautiful detail shots. And then this one got second place in the adult division. And, and you just kind of go through them. So we have adults, we have um, high school, um, and then we've got middle school. And like I said, these are all the winners. And then we've got elementary. super cool. And then we had a ton of Green Hope uh, Choice Awards. And so these are some that we were like, oh, they have to give an award. They're so cool. And so um, uh, all of these individuals are getting cash. Um, and so we believe in supporting our artists. Too often artists are asked to do stuff for free. 
and we know how that feels so he'd like to pay you um and then the racial harmony gallery if you want to go i won't go into it too much but we do believe that ever in equality and so that was something that was a little off base it wasn't entirely for recycle but um it was something that we definitely believed um our art pillar could help support is racial equality. It doesn't matter where you come from, people should be treated with respect and dignity. And so some of these will be actually be turned into murals downtown. This is one of the ones that won the Mural Choice Award. And so this will um, be a mural downtown. So maybe when you see some of these later, you can think of us, you'll know where they came from. Um, and so, um, like I said, if you want more information, go to the contact us tab, please sign up for our newsletter. Uh, that's where we blast a lot of important information. Um, and then what we do, we've got the summit, trash to treasure, we're going to do cleanups, we have El Paso Giving Day. Um, and then we have ESD and environmental artists and we do workshops and so cleanups, we typically do the Dr. Highway cleanups. Um, after the school year starts, so that would be what, July, August. So we'll start probably in late August. We'll go September, October, and then we, we stop shortly after that because it starts getting a little chilly. But we'll do about 10 to 12 cleanups a year every Saturday. So we would love to have you if you would like to come and help us with cleanups. Um, this is where we get rid of as much as we can off of Montana. That's our adopt a highway spot. Um, so we're grateful to, to the volunteers that we have had. I mean, look at this. I mean, what a crew. Um, and you know what? It's it, I know, guys, it gets disheartening when you think, oh, my gosh, I clean it up. And then it's there again the next week. Well, think about this. Two things. Number one, if you weren't there to clean it up that one week, it would just be double. So think about that. How many animals could you have saved that maybe would have get, gotten caught in this or gotten sick because of what they ate? Um, and then two, you're sending a message to the community because they see you out there with those vests on and they see what you're doing and they appreciate it. And you never know who that's going to insp inspire that's driving by, you know, you never know. Um, you got to plant those seeds and see where they grow. And some of these little kiddos that are helping, they're going to remember this and you're impacting the people that volunteer. When they get there, they had no idea how bad it was. Guess what? You're in their head now. You've changed them. Now they can't forget what they've seen because they experienced it. And so I think it's important, important that we keep going, even though it seems overwhelming. You have to balance it out like a yin and yang, right? Um, and then, you know, if you want more information about our mission, uh, you can, you know, meet the team. I've already told you who we are on the board. Um, we do some blogs and we have the about. And so um, going back to the our mission, um, education, environmentalism, and art. You can kind of get more info about that. And then the blog you might find interesting. Um, we're sampling different products. If you wanna try out new things that are um, environmentally friendly, they're non-toxic, we write reviews on them. So if you're interested in trying things out, you can see all of my dogs that I keep finding in the desert and I just bring them home with me. So I have a giant dog family. I think I'm up to five big dogs now. Um, I need to stop. My husband's getting mad at me. So <laughs> um, he tolerates me, he's amazing. Um, so, uh, you know, Mighty Nest is a really cool website that sells eco-friendly products. So, unpaste toothpaste, this gets rid of that plastic toothpaste bottle and it's just um, uh, super cool because they're toothpaste pellets. And so, get rid of this, keep this, yay, better for the environment. And so, there's all these really cool products. Um, we gave out some composters um, to people. Um, that have been following us and that have been helping. I don't know how a, lot, a whole lot about composting. I'm trying to learn. And so these are my my videos of me struggling to figure out what I'm doing so I don't have food waste, uh, inspecting all the critters that I keep finding in the composting, um, my dogs, you know, trying to, to stop throwing stuff into the landfills. And so, you know, the blogs are kind of interesting. You should check them out. These are, you know, the desert dogs that we've been finding, um, but, you know, Spoiler alert, everybody's fine. All these dogs have been saved and so happy endings. Um, and thank you to um, From the Heart, um, From the Heart Rescue, as well as Mutt Love for helping us with these babies. Again, with the composting. And so, you know, we're just trying to help people out, right? Little change, changes. 
little changes collectively, if we all do little changes, they're going to add up to a lot. Um, so, you know, just us and, you know, trying to get people to make sure that they vote. And so I'll let you check out the website. You can dig around a little bit more. And by the way, if you'd like to write for our website and do a blog, hey, man, we're, we're open to it. If you've got some writers out there, if we've got some photographers out there, if we got some artists out there, we would love to collaborate with you. Um, and then the last thing is just um, check out um, all of our uh, social media accounts. We'd love for you to register so you can stay up to date. Um, we have plenty of summit stuff left. And so we have until the end of May, we'll have summits continue. Um, and so I think on that note, that's a pretty cliff note version of what we do. I know it's a lot more in depth. There's many aspects to us. Um, donations appreciated volunteers always welcome your opinion is 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 definitely welcome because we need to grow and learn from you so i think we can't do this by ourselves we need the community to help and be a part of this so we would love to have you um and on that note i'm going to ask zulema if i forgot anything and then open it up to questions did I miss anything, Zulema? I think you got to the mic. Oh, no, you're good, man. That was thorough, for sure. Um, <laughs> I mean, other than other than, hey, join us if you want to volunteer and if you want to be uh, part of the wheel that makes change in this world, at least in this direction. Then uh, please, please be part. Whatever gifts you have, bring them, and and we'll be, you know. We'll be, we're willing to accept all kinds of gifts. And we're talking about your gifts, not not your monies, unless you got that, that's fine. But I uh, mean, more importantly, your talents, mm -hmm. you know, those gifts, those are the ones we need that for you to, we need a lot of things. Um, there's only like three of us running the show right now. And we really would like some uh, strong supporters and strong people who, who are uh, committed to to these three um pillars which is education environmentalism and art or any one of those three would be good too <laughs> right yep exactly zulema the one who's talking is uh, our artistic mastermind she does all the graphics the website the posters all the beautiful stuff so um we are very lucky to have her um and then we do have a question in the chat regarding writing curriculum have y'all had opportunities to present to board meetings at the various school districts we are not that far into it yet but that's why um we would like feedback about you know ideas like that so not yet but um that's definitely a great idea and i think we need to get our, our team together of educators, um, writers, um, environmental people, art people, anybody who's going to contribute to that kind of stuff and, and come up with a list of things that, like a checklist like that, right? Like that would be a great idea. Um, and just figure out which direction we're going with this and what tools we need to make that happen. And so I think that'll probably happen in June because I think like the summit is taking a lot of our time right now. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to make a mental note of that speaking to um, you know board members of the different school districts I think we need a plan before we do that so if you'd like to be a part of that we want to come be our friend um, <laughs> yeah how is Green Hope incorporated into curriculum at your school um, I am currently not teaching um, I was recently promoted to assistant director of fine arts for Socorro ISD. And so I'm working with a bunch of educators. Um, but whenever I did have the class um, last year, and as far as I know, the class still stands. I know it's weird because of COVID, but um, it was an art class. And so we turned it into a class that was called It's Your World. And so all of the art projects we did were, were geared around recycling and environmentalism. Um, which included more than just the hands-on. It, it included the research about policy, um, voting, um, you know, EPA, studying the EPA, um, studying, you know, different organizations, environmental groups. Um, and so uh, we have a really strong component of community service um, at El Dorado. And so um, a lot of what we found, we would turn into artwork. And so the kids were tasked with ideas of like, okay, you've got this material, now how are you gonna do an art project with it? Or how do you advocate to make sure artists are using more friendly products? Um, you know, because we, we're consumers, artists are consumers and, and we use a lot of materials. Sometimes they're not always very healthy. Um, and so we're trying to shift that paradigm. Um, 
Yeah, those are great questions. Thank you. I was going to say about um, incorporating into the curriculum uh, into our schools. Um, Candy also even had her kids out there with signs about uh, lowering carbon emissions. Is that what it was? Yeah, or, it was. The, is that? Yeah, it was when the Greta Thunberg had the the protest. <laughs> protest. Yeah, and she had all her kids out there. Um, but um, we would like to incorporate something like that into schools where where there's more of a plan for a teacher to follow through on that. But man, we want any ideas as possible like those for sure. And um, I, we were. Uh -huh. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just saying like, you know, I know we have the art background, but I think our goal is for other subjects to be able to incorporate at least a little bit of environmentalism to their lesson without trying to worry about how they're gonna research it, write it, come up with a project. I'm not the art teacher. I'm not sure what project-based stuff would be fun. Um, and so that's our hook is the project-based stuff. And so um, we would love for this to be in, I mean, this could easily be slipped into history classes obviously science classes. I'm sure there's some way we can incorporate it into math. Um, and so it, again, it goes easily into art. And so there's just, we want it to be embedded at least a little bit more. That's like the foot in the door for educators because it, it, it's so important um, because everybody needs to be healthy and live <laughs> and we need the world to be good. So this should be embedded into every every subject, at least a little bit, especially the, the little kids. Can you imagine the change that that can influence? Um, and so the comment in the chat says that this could easily permeate all core subjects. Yes, I absolutely agree. I don't understand the other core subjects, so I need help with that. Um, I do understand the arts. So we can totally do the project based part and make it make it fun. Um, we just need you to help with the content a little bit and we can make it work. Christina, I know you like artwork, so I hope you continue to follow us and enter our contest. We have them all a lot. I was thinking also to incorporate um, the into maybe classes that like the recycling part, at least like because there's so they throw away so many things in the schools like especially the students at the end of the year i'm like dumpster diving for color pencils markers notebooks that they just threw away that are practically brand new uh but then also there's the stuff that we can throw away like markers that are dried and stuff that we can maybe find a way to to kind of get rid of them in a safe way that it's not going to end up on in a landfill you know where plastic is there and all that no, and I think that's good that you're recognizing that there's waste all around us. And, and that, you know, I think the more people that are complacent with that waste, um, you know, it, it just continues this bad culture. And so I think we need more people to, you know, start really choosing who they're purchasing from or start calling people out on, hey, don't throw that away, I could use that. Or, you know, can we create a task force on our campus that's like an environmental task force? How can we, you know, eliminate more food waste and have the gardens here? And how can we have more, you know, curriculum like what we're talking yeah, about? And that could be a component that we could add to the high school curriculum. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. And I think if we have task force on the individual campuses that can then in turn reach out to like um, Patricia was saying, even the, the, the school board, hey, we got an idea this. We saw this problem. This is our solution to it. Do you approve it or not? I think that's when change is going to start happening. Um, it just takes time and the passion for it. So we need those people that can set aside that time for these things that are so greatly needed and then the passion and drive to, to follow through with it. I think when you work with kids in the schools, they're going to keep you going because they have that energy and excitement. And I think they just need you to facilitate. Uh, Christina, we really want you to do the art competition. So yeah, keep keep track, follow us. Um, and on that note, unless we have any more questions or comments, I think we've about covered it. We do a lot. That's Cliff Notes. Um, <laughs> but I think you get the point. Cool. Thank you so much for coming, guys.